Starting in January, schools in our area and all across the country will test their water for lead. This is part of the Environmental Protection Agency's new rule to reduce the lead and copper in our drinking water. And as it stands now, there are no state or federal regulations on testing, but Texas does have a voluntary testing program. Our case at Investigates team pulled some data from the program of schools and child care facilities. As Lee Waldman explains, some schools have some concerning numbers. <laughs> You place your sample and you just simply collect your first sample. It's an easy process to collect water from different fixtures. And we had prepackaged labels, envelopes, and you would just pack it in here and send it off to the lab. Simple as that. Dr. Melissa Hill, a professional geologist and assistant director of environmental health and safety with San Antonio ISD, walked us through the district's lead testing process. So we looked at cafeterias, gyms, um, where they're preparing food anywhere where water would be used. The district is actively a part of the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, or TCEQ's, voluntary lead testing program. We've sampled almost 3,000 different samples that we had tested for lead, and of those, 96% of them came back below the threshold of 15 part per billion. 4% of the samples are above the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's threshold of 15 parts per billion. Some are a lot above. We narrowed this data down to just the drinking fountains. 56 drinking fountains tested over the EPA threshold on the first round of testing. Of those, 49 were at SAISD schools. Highland Park Elementary had two water fountains in the cafeteria test extremely high, one at 685.7 parts per billion and the other 277.2 parts per billion. That's 45 and 18 times the actionable limit set by the EPA. This one has been permanently removed. It's no longer there. The other one, we removed it and then we put another one, but it's closed off. Smith Elementary, Mark Twain Dual Language Academy, and Pershing Elementary rounded out the top five highest lead counts found in at least one drinking fountain on its campus. While the district is taking mitigation efforts like closing off access to the fountains, some parents say they are still concerned. I'm shocked. <laughs> That's um, really surprising and um, a little upsetting. I didn't even know that lead in the water was a concern that I should have. I was definitely very disappointed and very concerned because, I mean, I know the effects of lead and, and the, you know how they can be long lasting. Ingesting lead can be harmful especially to young children and reproductive aged women. The EPA lists behavior and learning problems, slowed growth, hearing problems, lower IQ, and hyperactivity as possible results of lead exposure. The American Academy of Pediatrics states no amount of lead is acceptable for school-aged children and, quote, we should ensure water fountains in school do not exceed water lead concentrations of more than one part per billion. Diana Lopez, an SAISD parent who works in environmental advocacy, says it's important the district figures out where the lead is coming from. It is important to be able to understand where that sources are coming from and to understand that if it is part of the infrastructure of the schools. Based on the data that we've collected so far, it could be strictly from the uh, fixtures um, could be lead soldering. But SAIC doesn't have an answer for that just yet. The district is currently in the evaluation stage of TCEQ's voluntary testing program. It's waiting for analysis of additional tests to see what concrete solutions are needed to ensure students have safe drinking water. At least we know we're doing something about it. We're mitigating. Statewide, Bear County has the highest participation in collecting water samples to be tested. Now, in our investigation, we reached out to 23 school districts in nine different counties. SAISD was the only school to grant us an interview. 12 districts didn't answer multiple requests for information. Three others sent over information regarding lead testing being done. We have all the districts we reached out to and their responses on KSAT.com. There you'll also find the list of Bear County schools and child care facilities participating in the TCEQ program. For KSAT Investigates, I'm Lee Waldman. Keep up to date with all of San Antonio's top news, weather, and so much more by clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. And once again, thanks for watching KSAT.